Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We are celebrating Veterans Day today. That we're a couple days late, but that's okay. Will the veterans in the congregation please rise? Thank you for your service. Um, I know how the, whoa! These young ladies that, my, that just walked in uh, are sisters. I'm sure you can't tell that by looking at them. <laughs> and they are from the beautiful and gorgeous town of Plymouth, Connecticut. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Gee, why, why don't we make today just a little bit different, OK? OK. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let us begin with a call to worship found in your bulletins. <laughs> what the heck are you people doing here? <laughs> <laughs> the time has come, the time has come to follow Christ in the way of life. Let us come here to worship with a true heart and the assurance of through Christ, we are birthed new and become partners in God's creation. May the healing and wonderful waters of Christ pour down upon us. As we journey together, let us join in community as we celebrate the love of Christ. And while I have you up, let us together say the prayer of confession found in your bulletins. God, you know that we have sinned. You know that we have hurt each other, been unkind, and thought only of ourselves. You have given us such grace and mercy. Help us to extend the same to our brothers and sisters. Free us from loving grudges, from gossip, and from passing judgment. Let us never pour shame upon another, but instead love and peace. Help us walk with each other toward forgiveness and restoration. Thank you for the beauty you will bring to our relationships. Because we have sought your healing, we are yours, gracious God. Amen. We are yours, gracious God. We are the children of a loving God, a God that gave his Son so that we might be forgiven. In the name of Christ, we are forgiven. But 
There are some things that won't get torn down. There are some things that can never get torn down, and that is the Word of God. Because the Word of God has been around for 6,000 years. 6,000. There are very few things that have been around for 6,000 years. We'll be discussing that. But things that are even look so substantial as a cement block are only temporary. What is forever is God and His Word. <clears throat> in whom is all my delight. 
Those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. I will not pour out libations of blood to such gods or take up their names on my lips. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely, I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord, and with him on my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful ones see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. And then finally, we go on to the book of Mark. And it's Mark 13, verses 1 to 8, found on page 45 of the Pew Bulletins. Jesus goes to the temple for an inspection and then pronounces it desecrated by the priestly leadership. Mark's primary purpose was not to inflame speculation about the time or the end time, but rather to urge caution and wisdom. Hear now from Mark. As Jesus was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, look teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. Do you see all these great buildings, replied Jesus. Not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, tell us, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are about to be fulfilled? Jesus said to them, watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name claiming I am he and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginnings of birth pains. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart, O Lord, be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Has anybody ever been to the Washington Monument? Show of hands. A lot of you. Some of the, there's some fantastic buildings in Washington. The Capitol, the White House, the Smithsonian. It's certainly a place that will leave you awestruck. Has anybody climbed to the top of the Washington Monument? How did I know? Um, probably when you were a bit younger and a bit more adventurous, you might have. But not many of us now. It was built in two phases. One before the Civil War, the other one after. If you look closely, you'll see what appears to be two different colors of granite. And you would be right. The lower part was quarried up in Vermont, and it was then left, thinking that there would be enough stone to finish the monument. But some 30 years later, the color of the marble in the vein had changed, and it's noticeable today. So you look, and it's about, I think, two thirds one color, and then the top third is a shade different. Anyway, there was an earthquake there in 2011, and some water dislodged and cracks developed and a stone block fell. And there are teams figuring out in and out safety concerns and whether or not people would be able to go back up. Fortunately, you can. It's 555 feet of great human engineering. It's the world's tallest all-stone structure, made up of more than 36,000 blocks. If you've ever seen it, you wonder how it can stand straight up without tilting like the Tower of Pizza. Pizza. <laughs> Earthquakes happen. Things that we build are destroyed and, and life goes on. Of the seven wonders of the ancient world, only one, the pyramids, is around today. 
When we were there several years ago, I can attest to the fact that they are indeed wonders. Those huge limestone and granite blocks are quarried so accurately, how accurately are they quarried, <laughs> that you can't slip a piece of paper between them. And that is because they are in Egypt, which is a relatively stable place and a dry climate. We take temporary, temporariness for granted. We assign lifespans to just about everything. A gallon of milk will be good to next Tuesday. Canned corn? Oh, canned corn will be good until April of 2025. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, when I was sorting meals at the um, food pantry the other day, they ran into, I ran into some prepackaged meals. You know what date was on them? 2048. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and you, pro you could probably get a good 10 years out of, the, out of a Toyota. Herod didn't think that when he built the temple in Jerusalem. This brand new spiffy temple that he built would be his claim to immortality. It took 50 years to complete, and it was finished around the time of Jesus. Herod increased the temple mount and put the temple right in the middle of it so it would appear alone and grandiose, kind of like the Washington Monument. Josephus, perhaps the best known historian of ancient Israel, said the exterior of the building wanted nothing that could astound or it wanted nothing that could astound either mind nor eye for being covered on all sides with massive plates of gold the sun was no sooner up than it radiated so fiery a flash that persons straining to look at it were compelled to avert their eyes as from solar rays to approaching strangers it appeared from a distance like a snow-clad mountain for all that was overlaid with gold and purest white. Some of the largest stones, believe it or not, were 40 feet long, 12 feet high, 18 feet wide, and perfectly alabaster white. Herod was certain that this would be around forever and his place in history was secure. However, only 40 years after its completion, the Roman army quelled a rebellion in Jerusalem and as part of the humiliation of the city, tore down the temple so that there was not a stone left standing. The 15-story temple that served as a symbol of the power, strength, and chosen status for so many people came toppling down. It was meant to symbolize to the Jews that they were totally and completely defeated and annihilated. But it again proved that not all things are forever. Now, think about this. Imagine going back 20 years. A family of tourists steps out of a yellow cab in New York. They walk a short distance, and their eyes are drawn skyward by an amazing skyscraper in front of them. It's the largest that they'd ever seen, one of the two towers of the World Trade Center. They are so much bigger than they could have conceived. The bases are huge. The towers are going into the sky forever. And just then, you hear a voice coming off the street saying, Repent! The end is near. One day soon, not a stone of these towers will be left standing on one another. Now imagine that date in New York City was September 10th, 2001. It would hardly have seemed remarkable. Street creatures are a part of life in any major city. Who would have taken that person seriously? Who would have known, except a small band of terrorists in Boston, that what the street preacher railed about would come true the next day. It must have appeared the same to the Jews in Jerusalem when Jesus said, not one stone will be left on another and all will be thrown down. We look at life through temporary lenses. What's important today, eh, maybe ain't so important tomorrow. Remember when getting the new Ford Mustang was every young man's goal making a million bucks so that you wouldn't have any more financial worries seems to be an almost universal goal, except that a million bucks today doesn't buy near as much as it used to buy. Better make it two and a half million. Jesus warned people not to take stock in the temple. He could see that there would be an ending to it. And outside of the dustbin of history, nobody talks much 
about Herod. What does that mean for us today? It means that what we think what we think is important now may not be so important in 20 years, 30 years. It may not be so important in 100 years. So it brings us to the basic question for today. Just what is important in life? A rather big question, don't you think? It takes just a bit of time to think about answering before we go home to have lunch and maybe see a football game. How many of us actually spend time on the big questions? It's easy to get through the day so that we can get through the next day and the next day and not even ponder some of these things. It's a little bit more difficult to get through the whole next week and the one following, but we rarely think about what's important in life because it's such a big question. So let's think about it now. Some of us might think family, and family is a big part of life. Your career, definitely important, but it's something with an expiration date. Football, well, no, the Giants have a bye week this week, so it's not important. <laughs> I think in order to think about the big things, we need to get out of temporary mode. We need to look at what's important from God's perspective. You know, the whole love the Lord with all your heart, mind, body, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself thing. That's from Deuteronomy 6. Then we need to look at life and decide what we can do to love God and help our neighbor. Now, it may seem like an overly simple answer to an overly complicated question, but I don't think so. If we live only for ourselves and our immediate pleasure, that's all that we live for. David says in Psalm 20, some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fail, but we rise and stand upright. So just for a minute today, think about what your priorities are. Are they temporary? Are they only for you? Will they get cracks and kinks and eventually tumble down? Are you lifting up your head and looking for the important and the eternal? Or are you just trying to get through the day? The eternal is coming, folks. If we look at our lives from the vantage point of today, getting through until Tuesday is just okay. That's because we can move on to next Tuesday and next Tuesday. But how about looking, taking just time a little bit this morning and looking at your lives from an, an eternal perspective. When you look at what you did and why you did it, will you rejoice about it? If what Jesus says is right, and I think it is, will you be happy with yourself in 1,500 years when you look back at your life in hindsight? When you're looking over your life with Jesus, who has loved you since the day you were born, Will you be happy with yourself? Just in case you have some doubts about it, let's go to work on that perspective today. What do you think Christ would want you to do today? Well, coming here is a great start. Consider what you would think of the rest of your life. Aligning things of the world with the things of God would be a great start. How do you do that? Begin with figuring out how you handle all your stuff. If you hang on to it all because you might need it tomorrow, it's a temporary and a short-sighted way to look at your stuff. Look at it instead, perhaps this way. Suppose for a minute your real home is in Taiwan and you're visiting the States for business. You live in a hotel and you're told you can't bring anything back to Taiwan that you buy but that you can earn money and invest in your account back home in things that matter there. If this were true, then how would you choose to spend your cash? Would you fill your hotel with exp expensive, tough stuff like handmade furniture, flat screen TVs, and in the bathroom, and have a PlayStation 3 in every room? Or would you spend only what you need in your temporary residency and instead, invest all that you could in your real home. You'd invest in your permanent home. You would invest in hope. 
So it's up to you. What are you going to do with your stuff? How are you going to manage your life? In important things or just getting through until Tuesday? Having a PlayStation in every room may feel like fun for today, but are you going to care about it when you're back in Taiwan? If your hope is in Christ and your eternal life is with God in heaven, you'd invest in the things of heaven. So don't get caught up in temples here on earth. Guaranteed, they won't be around forever. Invest in your hope. Invest in what's important. And we go on. I think remain seated, but if you would say with me your statement of faith found in your bulletins. We believe in God, whose love is ever constant and steadfast, even when we are not. We believe in Jesus Christ, who walked among us, who was betrayed and forgave, and died that we might live. We believe in the Holy Spirit, ever present with us, to comfort us well as turn us forward in the name of Christ. We believe in the church as the place where we are loved and we are still gently encouraged to grow. We believe that we are called to be the church, to love people more than they deserve, because so Christ loves us. We believe in the miracle of life and in the life everlasting. Amen. And let us sing, this is my Father's world, number 370. our eyes on your world. 
and realized that nothing happens here without your knowledge. So Lord, we ask your blessings on us. We ask your blessings on this world. This world that is ever changing. This world that walks away from you, comes back to you, and walks away again. So keep us constant, Lord. Keep us constant in touch with you. Keep us constant in our prayers. Keep us constant in our hopes. Keep us constant in our dreams. Keep us constant in our thoughts. For all of those thoughts are of you, of what you give us, what you give us to steward in this world. Lord, help us to do the right thing with your world. Help us to keep in perspective. Help us to keep in love with you each and every day, not only Sunday mornings. And Lord, this morning we lift up travel for those who are traveling. We lift up our friend Greg, who's been with you 10 years today. We lift up Mike in Indiana. We lift up Faye and Joe. We lift up Barry Tinker and Rebecca Hollander. We lift up Mark Heifel and Sadie. We lift up Brenda Settlemeyer. Lord, we lift Margaret up for healing. We lift up Ariel in her, in her grief. And Lord, we lift ourselves up, each and every one of us. We lift ourselves up for your caring and concern. We lift ourselves up and say thank you for this life. We lift ourselves up and we say the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Are there any announcements today? David. Got two of them. Just to let you know, we are accepting donations of Presbyterian communities. We have some boxes back here in the back, so we appreciate anything that you can donate. And you'll see in the bulletin on December the 19th, we're going to have our soup supper, which will be at lunchtime right after worship. We thought that would be good to have it at that time of day for the folks that don't drive in the darkness of this time of year. We have it at lunchtime, maybe we'd have better attendance. So the next few weeks we'll be passing around the sheet, you know, to get people to sign up to bring soup, cornbread, tea, desserts, and all that. We are having our first meal together since this whole COVID nonsense started. <laughs> and thank you for arranging it and announcing it. Wow, how cool is that? Any other announcements? <clears throat> I know this is going to come as a shock. Right now, I have none. <laughs> <laughs> well, let us this morning now take our morning offering.
would have them go, let them do what you would have them do. All because you have blessed us so richly. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Oh, yeah. I have an announcement before we sing. Um, we have good news that there is a bus now coming down to little old Chiron to uh, bring folks to the senior center. So if any of you would like to go to the senior center for the morning, the bus will, after they bring you, believe it or not, they'll bring you home. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody's interested, please see Buddy. He's got the, uh, um, all the information on it. Okay? And also, you can play in an elevator yeah, this is not limited to Presbyterians. Okay. Let us sing number 268. Oh. 